today on Serve and Learn. Get ready, because we're about to explore the Dominican Republic, including the location, the geography, and the climate. We'll take a look at some of the people of the island, as well as some of the production that happens on the island, including the rice fields, the tobacco fields, and the salt flats. We'll also stop by a local shop to see where Dominicans buy their daily supplies. With some more coming up next on Serve and Learn. Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Serve and Learn. I'm Brian Link, and today we're going to explore the Dominican Republic. It's not unusual if you haven't heard a lot about the DR. It's not a country typically taught in schools. However, some of the similarities and differences that you'll find about this amazing country might leave you wanting more. So let's go check it out. The Dominican Republic is located in the Caribbean and occupies the eastern two-thirds of the island Hispaniola. Notice how close to Florida it is. The island is surrounded by the Caribbean Sea and the North Atlantic Ocean. The total area is almost 19,000 square miles or almost 49,000 square kilometers. That's slightly more than twice the size of New Hampshire or just a little bit smaller than Nova Scotia, Canada. The Dominican Republic is made up of many mountains and valleys. In fact, journals of Christopher Columbus were found describing this island as having a thousand trees seeming to touch the sky. The highest point can be found at Pico Duarte, also known as Duarte's Peak, at over 10,000 feet high, or 3,000 meters high. Although the Dominican Republic has its high points, it also has its lows. In fact, the lowest point in the Dominican Republic is Lago Enriquillo at a negative 150 feet below sea level or a negative 46 meters below sea level. It's tropical year-round in the Dominican Republic. There are typically two seasons that occur, summer and winter. However, even in the winter you won't find snowmen here. The average annual temperature is 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. Seems like the perfect temperature except in the summer months the temperature ranges between 80 degrees and 95 degrees Fahrenheit that's 26.7 and 35 degrees Celsius even though it is a tropical country sometimes in the highest mountain peaks the temperature could drop below the freezing point sometimes when we think of a tropical place we think of storms the wet season is from June to November tropical hurricanes occur occasionally and Hurricane George, which struck in 1998, caused a great deal of damage here on the island. Up next, we join Amy as she takes us on a virtual trip to the DR. What's the best way to get to this tropical island? Find out more when we return. But first, it's time to learn a new Spanish word. That's right, it's time for another Serve and Learn Spanish Word of the Week. This week's word, island. What do you say? Let's see it one more time. The word for island in Spanish is Isla Les Verdes. Isla, Isla. This has been another Serve and Learn Spanish Word of the Week. Welcome back. Behind me is a large map of the Dominican Republic. As you may have guessed, there are no roads leading to the Dominican Republic because it is part of an island. So how might one travel to this country? Let's take a look. The first way for a person to travel to the Dominican Republic would be by boat. There are many cruise ships that travel to some of the more touristy areas in the country. Places such as Santo Domingo in the south and also in the north, Puerto Plata and along the coast. Another more common way to travel to the Dominican Republic would be by airplane. There are three common airports in the Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo, Santiago, and Puerto Plata. There are a total of ten airports in the Dominican Republic, but these are the three largest ones. Back to you, Brian. Thanks, Amy. We've already learned a lot about the Dominican Republic, but what about the people who call this island home? The population of the Dominican Republic is just over nine million. And among those 9 million people, there are many ethnic groups. 16% are white, 11% black, 
and 73% are mixed. The official language of the Dominican Republic is Spanish. Most of the Dominicans live in small villages, but some live in bigger cities as well. Most homes are made of scrapped wood or cinder block. Lumber is very expensive in the Dominican Republic. Dominicans value openness, warmth, and hospitality. It's even very common to find a Dominican person would invite you into their home to chat, have a cup of coffee, or even to share a meal. Could you imagine walking down the street in your hometown when all of a sudden a stranger invites you in for some coffee or to share a meal? I can't imagine it happening in my hometown either, but it's the Dominican way. And now that we know a little bit about the people here, let's take a look at their daily lives by taking a look at the production of the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic is known as an exporter of sugar, coffee, and tobacco. Tourism has become a big part of the Dominican Republic, and because of this, the service industry has really taken over. 54.8% of the production comes from services such as tourism, while industry makes up 34.1% and agriculture makes up 11.1%. The Dominicans mainly grow sugarcane, oranges, bananas, pineapple, tobacco, beans, and of course their staple food, rice. Dominicans also raise cattle and depend upon the fishing industry to help their economy. We were able to go on a tour of a rice factory to see how rice actually gets to our dinner table. So let's go check it out. The process of getting rice from the field to your mouth is actually a little bit more complicated than you might think. The first step is actually getting the rice out of the field. It takes many workers and many hours to harvest rice from a field. Once the rice is harvested, it is placed into bags. From here, it is oftentimes taken out of the field by horse or by manpower to get the rice bags to trucks to ship them to the factories where they can be processed. Once the rice arrives to the factory, it is oftentimes stored in a large holding room until it is ready to be processed. Since rice grows underwater, the first step to processing the rice is to make sure that it is dry. To do this, it is sent through long conveyor belts which are heated by large furnaces. Oftentimes, these furnaces are kept burning by using the old husks that used to surround the pieces of rice. The rice is then stored in large silos which are cooled to temperatures just above freezing. When ready, the rice is sent through a series of machines. These machines sort the rice by size. These machines can also detect if a piece of rice has been broken. If this is the case, the piece of broken rice is sent to a different location where it is bagged and sold for a lower price. Once the rice has been sorted, it is sent to this machine where it is automatically weighed and bagged ready to be sold to stores all over the Dominican Republic. And finally the best part, the rice is cooked and ready to enjoy. Oh, and by the way, the Dominican currency is a peso, but it's different from the peso you might find in Mexico. Now let's go join Megan as she takes us to a local colmado to see some of the things you might spend your pesos on. You or someone you know probably have pets, whether it's a dog, a cat, maybe even a monkey. But here in the Dominican Republic, it's very rare to find a family that has an actual pet. 
Instead, as you can see, here animals often just roam free. Animals typically found in the Dominican Republic include goat, sheep, and cows. You might also find many dogs roaming in the streets of rural areas, but not really considered pets. Alligators are found in many of the river mouths, and this is one of the few islands where you can find a boa constrictor. Don't let this frighten you though. Most of the animals, reptiles, and insects keep to themselves. In fact, it's probably more common to see a person seeking out these creatures. Tarantulas and wolf spiders are both a common species here on the island. Here, you can see the kids trying to get the tarantula to come out of its home, a hole in the ground. To do this, they simply pour a little water down the hole and wait for the spider to evacuate. And within seconds, there you go, a tarantula. American cockroaches, American house spiders, American spider beetles are among other insects that can be found here on the island. Humpback whales can also be found on the northeast banks of the island as well. That does it for today's show. Be sure to check out some other cool features on the classroom portal. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.